Hello, my loves. Welcome or welcome back to Chemistry with Kismet Tarot. I am Monica, the Kismet Chemist. And today we are going to be figuring out what now, what's next, what's going on, what the heck is up. I felt really pulled to do a reading, but as I sat here, I didn't have a topic in mind and there were so many different options, so many different questions, so many different guidance ideas that just flew through my head. So I was sitting and shuffling the energy and spirit oracle and I said, spirit, what is, what is going on here? I felt so clear that there was something that I needed to come and share with the collective that, that you were asking me to come here and share what is going on. And as I asked that, two cards flew out and they were confusion and mindfulness. And then I heard clearing the clutter. And I tried to do my usual setup but I couldn't. I had to simplify. I had to reduce. I had to clear the clutter, clear all the excess that was up there. The crystals, I was led to intuitively. This is about helping clear your mind, clear your heart, so that you can hear your own guidance system, so you can hear your angels, so you can hear spirit, so you can hear your guides, so you can hear your ancestors, because they're trying to reach you. And there's so much mental clutter right now. There's so much energetic clutter right now. All that being said, instead of going on and on, which you guys know I have a tendency to do, you know, very mercurial person by nature. But what I would like to do with you is I'd like to just sit here for about a minute. I'm going to put music on and I want you to let your mind Focus only on the images. Focus on the images. And when you feel, it'll feel kind of like a string is attached to your heart. When you feel a kind of tug in the center of your chest, when you're looking at a specific image, that's your pile. If you feel multiple tugs, there are multiple messages. Now, I want to remind you all we are now officially into Mercury retrograde, which means it's time to learn a new way to communicate. I just heard don't go by numbers. Your body is going to show you how it speaks to you in the selection process. So without further ado, let's get that music going and I will see you at your piles.
tile one. So if you chose the first card, then the message for you is actually in the fourth card. Now you guys, because you're the, the first pile, <laughs> um, you guys get to find out about the special little trickery. So the Seven of Swords has been following the collective. It's been kind of everywhere. It's something that we too often look outside ourselves and think, well, there's got to be some sort of deceit going on. Somebody is betraying me. Where is it? And then your mind gets very chaotic, very clouded, and you can veer towards vengeance. I really genuinely didn't know what I was getting into when I started this reading. Um, I've never done anything like this before, so, uh, you know, Spirit's asking me to kind of step out of the norm, step out of my comfort zone and reach you guys in a, in a different way. So pile ones. Something happened recently. What I'm spirit is showing me is something happened recently that has you feeling like, well, where do I go from here? Because a solution, an answer, a reason, um, some form of justice, something that you believed would be a result of something didn't and I feel this deep sadness but also this feeling like it's like the phrase a babe lost in the woods it's kind of like you didn't realize that you were wandering the woods to begin with and you found yourself lost there. And it's not that you weren't led. You were. But it's that the, the lesson was about you trusting the path no matter what happens. Solutions that come from the mind, that come from the shadow. They can be short-sighted, they can be short-lived. But when you sit down and you get still and you say, Spirit, show me, show me where to go from here. Help me move forward. It's in those moments that you're allowing a stillness to come in and true solutions. And I feel very strongly, and I, am, I apologize because this may trigger some of you, but sometimes we see injustice in order to understand what battles we are meant to fight and what battles we are meant to walk away from, even if walking away from it feels like defeat, even if walking away from it feels as though the bad guys win. And sometimes we have to make a decision to say, this is not for me to balance. This is for spirit to balance. And I'm giving it up to spirit to balance. So that was the initial message that I got from your card, from your energy. So we're going to dig into we have a plethora of oracle cards that are going to help me see what spirit wants you to know about what's next. <laughs> where, where do you go from here? That it feels very much like you're on a path and, and you know it's right. There's something holding you back a little bit, but it's almost as though this one wrench got thrown in and you're wondering, what do, what do I do? Do I keep moving forward? Do I keep focusing on what I've been focusing on? Or do I redirect my focus to this situation? So let's find out what's going on. So we have the lion. 
and the Phoenix. The Mentor and the Pilgrim. The Knight. Light attributes are loyalty, romance, chivalry, a love of honor. Shadow attributes are allegiance to a destructive ruler or principle, romantic delusions. And then we have Storyteller. Ability to experience and express life through stories and symbols. Shadow attribute, making up tales that harm others. And then we have Birthing a New Age. Birthing new creations, dreaming a new world into being. We have 33 with soul love. And I'm going to shift this over just a little bit because we've got 19 with transformation. Okay. So. <clears throat> First of all, <laughs> I already, I recognize one of the energies that I'm picking up. So, um. This is not an unfamiliar territory to me, this mentor, the lion, the shadow attributes of the night and soul love. So I'm going to tell a story and I actually go into deep detail about this in my book, Something Spiritually Catchy. So if you want the full story, check that out. But I got involved with a spiritual community, a spiritual mentorship. And the way that it was presented to me was very much as though they had all the secrets to everything that I was looking for. They had all the answers to what I needed in my life. And they presented it on the silver platter and they pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed until there was so much fear that if I did not spend all this money on what they were offering, that, that I would be nowhere, that I would go nowhere, that I would have no answers, that I could not do it. And <clears throat> in that moment... It was, I truly thought that I had found my soul family, that I had found a way to express my soul, my, my soul's love, my soul's truth into the world in a way that it would reach more people. I was so focused on the numbers. I was focused on the progress, on the physical, tangible things that would result that I was not paying attention to the truth of what was going on. I wasn't looking at whether their their stance and, and their words matched their energy. I just thought, I finally have found somebody who's going to help me. I have finally found someone who's going to reach out to me, who's going to guide me, who's going to give me the help that I need to be able to live the life that I dream. I did not realize at that time that I had looked to them much like they were the lion. They were the lion leading the pride and I was just a member of the pride. I allowed myself to believe that I could only go one direction. And when I realized the further into the program I got when I realized that it was not going to help me because their methods did not align to me energetically. They, ju they just didn't align. They may help other people, but it, it genuinely wasn't right for me. But it was my fear. It was my fear within that I could not do what, I what I'm here to do. I, I didn't believe in myself enough to know that I could do this that led me to finding someone who would promise me certain things and not deliver because I kept promising myself certain things and not delivering. And what I had to do was essentially what is next for you. What's next for you 
is to tell your story, to speak your truth. And, it, and telling your story is, it doesn't have to be, for instance, I, you guys know I'm an author. It doesn't have to be through writing. It doesn't have to be through blogging or podcasting. You can tell your story by painting. You can tell your story by sitting down and speaking it out into the universe and just getting it out of you. Clearing the clutter of what happened because when you do that, it is much like the pilgrim. You are going on an inner journey and you're going on this inner journey because it's time for you to be able to move beyond what happened. It's time for you to be able to move beyond the people that you thought that you would be able to count on to re help you understand that spirit has been trying to teach you that you can count on yourself, you can count on spirit, you can count on your guides, and you can move forward knowing that whatever has happened has taught you what you needed to learn to get here, right here, right now, so that you may grow further. And the Phoenix card, the Phoenix card correlates to the root chakra. So this, whatever this was, really challenged your sense of safety and security within yourself and who you are and your place in the world. It challenged whether you would be able to really bring forth anything that would be actually solid and grounded within this world as though everything that you've ever dreamed of was just floating in the ethers and you would, couldn't touch it and couldn't see it. And the challenge that it presented to you quite literally led to a transformation and you have the the literal transformation card but the phoenix is all about transformation the phoenix is the highest level of scorpio energy so some of you may be scorpios you may have scorpio strong scorpio placements um you may have leo in your eighth house and the sun in leo in your eighth house which means to me, what what I'm seeing as far as the sun with the sun and Leo falling within the eighth house, if that's how it falls in your chart, that kind of placement is about learning how to share your own personal transformations in the world and doing it proudly, knowing that you have you've changed, you've grown, you've learned. This journey that you've been on, you may not have ever even left your house. I always say that I, I went on this big long journey, but I never once left my my home state. I didn't I didn't travel the world. I traveled through hell and high water through myself. Sometimes it's about a perspective shift in order to be able to really truly see where to go next but also to see where we've been not all situations are going to be like they were in the past and the more that you allow this transformation to occur and this understanding that who you are is who the world is meant to see then you you really allow that love into your soul and you shine it forth Some of you may actually want to tell stories of knights and conquerors and things of that sort and think, well, I'm a spiritual person, so can I, can I truly tell these stories if I'm a spiritual person? Because it's fiction and fiction is escapism. But you know what? Here's the thing. We learn in so many different ways. And spirit... I, I truly believe that everything in the world is here for us to, to learn, to grow through. All you have to do is shift a perspective and see that, you know what, this situation was really terrible. It was really hard. It was really heavy. But through it, I was able to learn of my own strength and the things that I am here to teach others and the way that I am able to share my soul and share the love that I have and help transform the world by showing them my own personal transformation, by showing them what this is like and how it looks and how you can honor yourself, 
along this journey. So we've got the six of roses with the war of the roses. And this is a this is a very firm cautionary card that says, okay, your flag has fallen. This situation has come to a close. And the longer that you stand on the battlefield ready to go to war, the longer it's going to take for you to understand that the most peaceful solution is walking away it's just walking away you don't need to feel guilty for doing it you don't need to feel as though you're wronging yourself you don't need to feel as though somebody has su suddenly overcome you it's knowing your heart and knowing that your heart says you know what i want this to be closed so i am giving myself permission to close it and then we have the queen of roses um, and the one of keys, the architect reversed. I want one, one more is two more. Okay. The number 16 with caught in the ruins. And we have the reversed queen of keys. Okay. So what I can see here. <laughs> If you look, the Queen of Roses is focused looking back at the situation. The one of keys, the architect, you can see him pointing. He's pointing to the Queen of Roses. Caught in the ruins is where you want to go. The Queen of Keys is who you want to embody because as you can see, she's looking, she's looking the other direction. But this queen of roses means that your heart and your mind are are caught on this situation this feeling of defeat this feeling of having to throw in the towel when you weren't ready to throw the towel in it's what i am hearing is it's challenging you to restructure instead of instead of continually battling continually destroying continually fighting to realize that sometimes the situation just needs to be walked away from and i'm i'm not going to lie to you guys like i feel like that's hitting me on a personal level too the architect card talks about building the plans for your future when it is in reverse the plans have gone wrong and you're trying to figure out how and he's literally pointing to how it went wrong. You have this feeling, you don't see the reality that you're not actually caught in anything. You're not trapped. You're not stuck. You're not, you're, you're not as, it, it's not as bad as what it seems, even though your mind is, is whirling continually in this like chaotic mayhem and confusion it's not that bad but your heart is trapped in in this situation in the past it keeps looking back to what happened and how bad it was and what you need to understand is in order for the plans that you have made which are solid plans they're good plans they're the plans you're meant to do they're it's what you're supposed to do it feels like spirits like no you need to know you have been birthing new creations. You have been doing the right thing. You have been moving forward. You have been standing in your power and understanding that this is what you want to do. And your heart has been full. And then whatever it was that came in shifted you into a, I need to look at the past. Now, those situations come in. But it's about not dwelling. It's about seeing it differently now. You're not in it. Now you're out of it. Now you've changed. You've grown. You've shifted. You've started something new or some things new. You have approached the world in a new way and you are being seen. You're being heard. You're growing. You're whatever it is. Whatever it is, you feel as though you need to tweak all your plans all of a sudden because this one hiccup came in, but you're not trapped by this hiccup. It is literally just a hiccup. 
This is one of those like hanged man moments. Hang yourself upside down, drink a glass of water from the opposite edge, and let the hiccup go away. Because right now, the only thing stopping you is this focus on what happened before. And what happened before is not what sh what is meant to happen. The Queen of Keys is looking to the future. She knows what's coming. She knows where she's headed. She has this firm, strong foundation. And normally, I would read the Queen of Keys differently, but it's about the direction she is looking. And just like I said, the hanged man, you, you have to flip it. You have to shift it. Shift it in your mind so that you see that you're not trapped by the illusions that were created. You're not trapped by the fears that were elicited. You're not trapped by the actions or inactions of you or anyone else. There is no, there is nothing here that shows me that you are trapped aside from your own mind being focused on this past situation, which means what do you do from here? Where do you go from here? You just keep doing what you're doing but you stop ruminating on this situation that made you throw your flag it's i heard i'm hearing throw throw the white flag i would rather have you guys understand that throwing a white flag is better than waving the red flag in front of an angry bull sometimes we don't see the danger in in, in what we're doing in the moment because we're hurt we're wronged and it and and it's true we are hurt we are wronged somebody has done something they have been deceptive they have been deceitful they have hurt us they have harmed us they have challenged our place in the world and we want to fight back we want to fight back because we want to show them you know what i'm stronger than what you See, I'm stronger than what you will allow me to be. So I'm going to prove it to you and I'm going to go toe to toe with you. And that's just, spirit just doesn't want that this time. This time it's about moving out of the fighting stance and moving into the learning and sharing and freeing yourself. We have the Queen of Crystals with comfort and prosperity. Is this something that um, perhaps you lost a job because someone lied? Uh, someone, you had to take the blame for someone else? Um, or whatever it was really hindered the progress your, your career was making? It... It shook things up in your home life. And it, it presented in this very cute, very loving manner. You have the nine of crystals with security and abundance. Yeah. There it there's a lot there's a lot here that feels like um it challenged your money mindset. It challenged your belief in what you can build in the world of what you're meant to have but even the security card is what we, we were talking about with your root chakra we've got the seven of feathers preparation and resourcefulness which is the seven of swords i told you guys i was feeling that energy so the preparation and resourcefulness that a cheetah moves at lightning speeds i mean a cheetah is stupid fast this is saying, okay, yes, this, this was a challenging situation. Yes, these things were called into question. But have you not seen the transformation that you have gone through and, and what it has helped you prepare for? You don't have to be paranoid. You don't have to feel as though someone is always going to come and get you. But you see how resourceful you are you see what you contain within you to overcome these situations and to move forward to take a stand and take a step and even if there are outlier situations that you can't control that hinder what you've tried in order to put this to rest you've done everything that you can everything you were meant to and everything that was the right thing to do and it taught you that you have more strength within you to 
take a stand to to move from your true self to protect your heart and to focus on what you love finally we have the ten of feathers recovery and transformation okay so like it's the snake and and a snake sheds its skin when that skin is no longer needed this is quite literally saying you've done everything that you needed to do you you did it all now it's time for you to allow for a transformation you are prepared like you are prepared all all of everything that felt like it got shaken up in the past it the past is the past is the past it's time to focus on what is coming next and what is coming next is security and abundance and prosperity and safety and all the things that you have literally been spending all your time focusing on and preparing for they're coming next and with that it's time for you to allow yourself to recover and to transform and to not shy away from that because this transformation is absolutely right we have the sixth house and the eleventh house and i want to get one more but the sixth house is about your work your routine your daily life your um your health it can be long-term health issues the 11th house is your dreams and your goals and your aspirations so you may be working on making your dreams a reality um you may have transits in the sixth house and the 11th house what did i say leo all right okay we have lilith and the waxing crescent moon so the waxing crescent moon is when the moon is growing into the first quarter moon. And if you guys follow my channel, you know I talk about the primary moon phases, the first quarter moon. But the waxing crescent moon is this build-up phase. There's far more divine feminine energy during that than there is divine masculine. And that means that it's time for you to really get in touch with that divine feminine side. Lilith is about not being subjugated. I will say this until I'm blue in the face. Lilith is about seeing where there has been a wrong and saying, I will not engage in that. This is my way. This is what is true to me. And I am moving forward in that. And this is helping you really, truly get more in touch with your divine feminine. Everybody paints Lilith in the wrong, <laughs> just, just in the wrong light. They see her as, you know, your, your secret sexual proclivities. And for me, it's Lilith didn't want, didn't want to be seen as beneath Adam. She wanted to be his equal. She didn't want to be above him. She wanted to be equals. She wanted that balance. She wanted that harmony, that that equality between the two and right now you could be feeling a lot of a lot of feminine energy that receptivity can make you very emotional and it it makes you emotional to help you understand that it's through working on your emotions transforming your emotions that you're able to see how it helped how it hurt and how it changed you how it changed your work routines how it changed your dreams and your goals and your ambitions and how it helped bridge this building of a community and a place in the world the 11th house traditionally guys and i'm going to throw this out there real quick before i get your last oracle card the 11th house traditionally was about abundance it was about wealth it was it was where you found your money in in life that that's how it started because it got because it's aquarian energy and aquarius is about pouring out into the collective we can bridge the sixth and the eleventh house what you're working on what you're focusing on the things that you do for work can help bring in so much more abundance prosperity friendship community but it can help you make your dreams a reality it's just that right now the energy is saying it, you're you're transforming 
this illumination will come, but you, you're in a transformational stage, a transformative stage. So let's find out what healing message we have for you before we go. So it says, faithfulness. I commit to my mind, heart, and will. I am devoted to the needs of my soul. I trust in myself, in God, and in the universe. This, what you're stuck on, what you're focusing on, it was testing how faithful you were to your own dreams. It was testing how committed you were to yourself and how much you were willing to see that your soul loves you and you love your soul and you are meant to move from the soul because you are that person. You just are. Have faith in you because spirit, your spirit guides and me, we all, we all have faith in you. It's time to make your dreams a reality. That's, that's what's next. All right, pile one. <laughs> it still tickles me a bit. Pile one, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to your guides and to my guides for facilitating the connection between us. Thank you for the energy, for the understanding, for the messages, and the receptivity to hearing and healing. Thank you so much to Spirit for my gifts that I am able to share with the collective and bring more of you into the world. And once more, I want to say thank you to you guys. If this video resonated, please hit the like button, share it, uh, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you guys are interested in, in something spiritually catchy, it is... I will have my author page for Amazon linked down in the description box and you can see all of my books down there. There are links to my program, Breaking Boundaries, Finding Freedom, plus a 75% off discount coupon with the word Eclipse for 75% off until June 1st. And if you would like to book a personal reading or donate to the channel, all the links are in the description box. All right, Pylon, I love you guys so much. Thank you again for being here. I will see you again next time. Bye. Hello, Pile 2. So as I explained with Pile 1, uh, the Seven of Swords has been flying through the collective on a regular basis. And even though I read the Seven of Swords well, actually, the way that I read the Seven of Swords plays a big part of why this reading is the way that it is. Our minds can have a tendency to deceive us. And when we see something like a card like the Seven of Swords, our initial thought can be, it must be some sort of deception outside of ourselves. And we'll look and look and look and look until we create the situation where there is deception outside of ourselves. Never realizing fully that it's all coming from within. And if we would but just take a moment and, and look back at the way that we used to think and whether we are falling back into those ways and those patterns, we might be able to save ourselves a lot of hardship that and Mercury is moving backwards and it would seem as though communication needs to be a little bit different right now. As Spirit led me to doing this reading, I, I have kind of been fighting it. Um, I wanted to just switch around the first pile with a different pile, but I got a very firm no. That's that's not how we're doing this. It has to be a specific way. And there was a reason for it. And I understand it now because the reason for it is those of you who selected pile two based off of the imagery or based off of the number on the card or what 
you felt like you needed to hear, the message for you here is a lot, a lot more prominent. Sometimes the strongest people have the hardest time asking for help. And we struggle to hear that truth, to know that truth, and to accept that truth that we need to ask for help. And this pile particularly, the messages for you guys have been flooding in for days without me realizing. Um, numerology, but very much chakra oriented now this this angel angels of the seven chakras ca card <laughs> forgive me um angels of the seven chakras card talks about each of the chakras and what archangel corresponds to them michael um shamuel raphael i think i can't remember who all they are for sure i know gabriel metatron uriel I want to say I'm forgetting one more, um, are all listed in there. This is, this is a very, very strong message to let you know that the archangels hear your calls. They hear your calls. You are truly connected to them. And the reason why you may feel as though you're not being heard, as though you're not being helped, as though you're not being protected, your voice isn't going where you want it to go or your heart feels very clouded and your head feels very clouded is because there is this inner truth that you don't want to look at which is what I feel very strongly that that you don't believe that you will be helped if you ask that you don't believe that you, it, it's like I can go it alone. I know I have to go it alone and I can do this on my own. But there are seven archangels coming through right now. Seven of them. That is profound. That is so much more profound than you can understand. And they're all here to help you really ground yourself into the physical. Now, normally numerologically, we would say 35 reduces to an 8. What I'm getting is 35 and seven are connected by the number five. Which means the angels are here to help usher in change in your life. They're here to help you understand that change is okay. That it's okay to ask for help in the midst of change when you're not really sure which way is up. There is a very, very deep power within you that wants to come out. But you have to allow yourself to ask for the angel's help. Ask, ask spirit for help. And not just, when you're, not just when you're at your lowest. Wake up in the morning and say, help me, help me to see what I need to see today. Help me to feel what I need to feel today. Help me to rest. Help me to move. Help me to grow. Help me and allow me to work with you allow me to be more connected to you sometimes we we overanalyze we make things more challenging than they need to be and we're going to take a look at what it is that has been challenging you what it is that has been making you feel as though you can't call for help from from the angels from the archangels from spirit and, and it's very specific. What I'm feeling is very specific. It's like you will talk to your ancestors. You'll talk to your star seeds. You'll talk to your spirit guides. But there's this angelic force that feels as though they're not being heard. So let's take a look. So we have the comic, the womb, and the tiger. And you guys, this pile got the most oracle cards. You got the most oracle cards. Especially with the, the um, archetype cards. 
So there's, it feels like there's a lot going on with you where you're really trying to figure out where to, where to go from here because you're not really sure who you are or how to go about being yourself. So we have God, benevolent and compassion, or benevolence and compassion, recognizing the eternal force within yourself and others. And the shadow attribute of this is despotism and cruelty, using power to control people. Okay. Then we have addict. Light attribute helps you recognize and confront addictive behavior. Shadow attributes compromises integrity and honesty allows an addictive pattern to have authority over your inner spirit. And then we have vampire. Light attribute makes you aware that someone or something is draining your life force. Shadow attributes depleting others for your psychic survival. Chronic complaining and codependency. Then we have warrior woman. Have you answered your deepest calling? I told you there was something really deep within you. And then we have the card 35 with light beings. And the card 38 with create space. Now I know a lot of people are going to see this light beings and be like star seeds. That's not what I'm getting. Like we've got spirit. We've got the angels right here. And they're trying to help you understand that you have just come through this phase of recognizing like truly, truly, true blue recognition of psychic vampires, of energy vampires. And, and I don't use those, those phrasings lightly. It's as though you had to understand, um, they're bringing me to a correlation instead of, they want me to tell you a story. Okay, so... I went through a lot in 2021. As I was moving through that, I was training and studying and practicing both tarot and oracle cards, but numerology. I was getting certified in spiritual coaching. I was getting certified to do intuitive readings, but I was also becoming a Reiki grandmaster. And doing all of that all the time, there was this constant internal need for me to find my place in the world to connect with other people that would understand because I very barely understood myself the problem was was that I was not in the right state myself I was not in the right energetic frequency or or vibration however you want to view it I just see it as I wasn't emotionally where I needed to be in order to bring in the people who were truly meant to be in my life and because of that I met a lot of people who sounded on paper as though they would be really good for me as though they were really like they really got it they really understood they really were right on par with me and this is not a reflection on them this is I I became almost obsessed with making sure that I found my soul family without realizing that I'm surrounded by family all the time. I am surrounded by soul family all the time, even if they're just in spirit guide form. And that when the time is right, the people who are right will come in. During that time, I learned what were my actual physical body's indicators that I was spending too much time with a person who was an energy vampire. I would get sick and I I used to be chronically ill. I got better. I don't want to, we're not going to go into all of that. But after I got better, the more that I'd start welcoming new people into my life, I would find that I would start having some of the same symptoms. I would have pains. I would get sick and have to go to the doctor. And it would lessen with distance from these people or these communities or certain things that I was engaging in. You have just come through a time where you felt like what I'm picking up is you felt like you did this all on your own. You you literally had to eliminate so many people on your own. But you were never alone. The tiger talks about about the 
the potency and the power of the nighttime, of the lunar cycles, of the things that we can't see but we can feel and we can hear and we can know. The intangible connection to the higher realms. Every time that you felt something like, I should probably walk away from this person. I need to do this. This is something that I feel called to do. Every time you felt that, that was your intuition, your guides, your angels and spirit coming in to tell you these things. But the further along you got, the more you felt as though spirit was just cruelly ripping people away from you. What I'm getting from the womb card is what you didn't realize is you were literally in, you were in like the cosmic womb. You were, you were this pearl in the center of it. You were being nurtured. You were being grown. You were, you were being shaped and molded into who you are, in, into seeing the truth of who you are because you had gotten to a point where you would ask for help and you just weren't able to fully see it with your physical eyes so your mind made jokes about it. it it wanted to laugh it off as though it wasn't anything big and in reality what happened was there there was this space being made as you were i'm seeing like a baby being swaddled but it's actually like a grown adult which is kind of amusing but i'm seeing this grown adult being swaddled and just held surrounded and held by all these angels and by spirit and it's like you were being infused with light and with love and with comfort but your mind was so stuck on these old ways of doing things and old ways of seeing things that i see comic but i i feel joke you you thought that you were a joke to the heavens like i'm doing all of this i'm working my butt off i'm doing all of this what why what more can I do and that's that's this overwhelming like I feel so it's almost it's almost like on the verge of feeling hopeless because you've lost so much you've lost so much that you've learned that the only way to handle it is to make a joke of it but it's not a joking matter to you. There's something coming from within you now that is asking you to see all of this, to, to understand that you were never alone. You didn't ever go through anything alone. And I can feel resistance when I say that. There is a difference between being lonely and being alone. And when it comes to spirit, when it comes to angels and archangels and our guides, they don't, they don't just abandon us. Not in life nor in death is what I just heard. Your mind, your mind can, can really bully you. It can really make you feel as though, oh, I apologize for knocking the microphone it can make you feel as though you're always in the wrong and you're always doing this uphill climbing a mountain with your bare hands and bare feet with no help no support and no bracing and and it's up to you to do it all right so we have caught in the ruins ruins that's a card 16 and i wouldn't <laughs> I would not normally place it like that. That's how it fell. It fell on the floor, by the way. Um, but the reason why I put it that, that way is because caught in the runes when it's upright, there are these two people and they're in this jail, but there's no, there's no roof. There's no like real lock on the door. They, they aren't actually caught, but they believe that they're stuck. Now, when it's, reversed they've freed themselves from this you're somewhere in between right now it's this your i look at the addict the addict card and the way that he's pushing it and pushing it that 
is kind of where you're at now because because I get this sense of I will not get stuck again. I will not be thrown into the trenches again. This is not what's going to happen. Oh my gosh. I am so sorry, guys. And you you are pushing it and pushing it and pushing it away. But pushing it away is not creating space. It's actually compacting something that will blow up. It's like if you put Mentos in a bottle of Coke is what I'm being shown. And then you screw the lid on. It's still going to explode. But it has to build and build and build. So the more that you push all of this down instead of just letting it out, the, the more you're going to be shifting this cot in the ruins card upright. And you're going to start feeling stuck because you're creating this pressurization within you that can explode. Can we get a little less than that? Okay. What else do, does pile two need to know? Okay, that's too many. We do have the muse in reverse. Okay, I've got two here. I'm so sorry, your cards are just kind of a mess. Um, we have the divine physician, card six. The queen of keys. And the five of scrolls with diversity. Okay, so here's, here's the thing. The Divine Physician, when it is in reverse, is talking about a need for healing, a need to believe in your own ability to heal and, and your own ability or your own healing gifts. Um, what I'm getting is there is there's this healing that's coming in, and if you look really closely he has a caduceus on his chest which is the medical symbol but the caduceus can also be associated with mercury and mercury is in retrograde so what i'm seeing is there is this opportunity during mercury retrograde for you to really reflect on whether you are truly caught and, and trapped and stuck whether the things that your mind is telling you that is true whether or not it's true and heal that because right now you have the keys to the castle you know your worth you know what you're you're meant to do where you're meant to go you know your calling that's deep within and it is it is something that really the di diversity card that i'm getting is it, it really does shake up the norm it, it really is not it's not something that's necessarily in the world in the form in which you want to bring it into the world. It's something within you that wants to help other people understand all the differences between everyone and how beautiful they are. In whatever way it is that you want to bring that into the world. It, there's this also deep urge and, and feeling of I want to learn I want to learn about this and I want to learn about that and you feel as though you can't because you're trapped in this I don't have anyone to learn from and I don't have anywhere to go and I don't have any idea how to go about doing this and throughout this time frame there is this deep healing of your belief in what you are capable of of where your life is going and and really helping you see that the only time you're ever stuck or caught in the ruins, and this feels very like Eight of Swords energy, the only time that you're in that state is when you allow yourself to believe you're in that state. When you push off the truth of who you are and, and what you're capable of and what you want for yourself and you allow yourself to determine your worth based off of what somebody else has said, or the way that people have been taking from you and you don't want to deal with that anymore. So you think that you have to stay shut down or shut off or shut away. The longer you don't heal this, this piece of you that is coming up to be seen, coming up to be heard, coming up to be acknowledged and be released so that you can create space for a new way forward the longer you stay in this 
limbo state of am I stuck or am I not stuck? Can I change or can I not change? What's going to happen in my life? Where do I go from here? When you acknowledge and address these things, then you can move forward. So we have the Ace of Feathers with Mental Clarity and Foundation. And that's the Ace of Swords. We have the Magician with Willpower and Creation. You see here, do you see what happens when you allow yourself to understand that it isn't because of... Hang on, your cards keep falling on the floor. It isn't because of anybody else. It's because you needed to learn your own strength, your own truth. You needed to learn how grounded and rooted you are in who you are. You needed to learn how to find this mental clarity because with that, anything and everything that you create holds this beautiful magic to it. And then we we have the page of acorns with discovery and enthusiasm. I just heard it's time to get curious again. It's time to start looking into the things that you want to look into. This diversity card in the discovery and enthusiasm card is saying it's okay to explore now. The hi Okay, history is only doomed to repeat itself if we don't learn and grow from it. So you don't have to repeat the same patterns over and over again. All you have to do is learn from what has transpired and grow through it. When you grow through it, then you become the embodiment of the lesson that you have learned. And when you embody that lesson, that is true integration and it is true willpower. And now you have this mental clarity and this foundational understanding of who you are, why you're here, what you want to do, and where to move in every moment and you understand that you have this divine help right there next to you all the time we have psyche i'm not at all surprised to see that 10th house okay <laughs> i am not pulling anymore okay psyche i okay psyche is one of my absolute favorites i was just talking about this uh, asteroid with my best friend on Mother's Day. Psyche is all about, it's about whether or not we're going to listen to outside people or whether we're going to listen to our heart. Psyche was this beautiful mortal. She was beautiful and she was single and her, her father could not understand how, how do you have no suitors? So he forced her to dress up in mourning outfit, like black dress, black veil, and go stand on the precipice of a, a cliff and said, step off it. If I'm right, you'll be rescued. If I'm wrong, well, at least you won't be single anymore. Okay, mythology can be really dark. She was saved by Zephyrs, the West Winds, and they brought her to Eros, who was Cupid. Eros told Psyche, you cannot look at me because he didn't want her to know he was a god. He wanted her to love him for him, not because he was a god, not because he was beautiful, not because he was Cupid, but he wanted to be loved for who he was. Psyche lived in this mystical island with Eros and they were very happy and very much in love until she got a visit from her sisters and her sisters in jealousy, as they have always been because she is so beautiful convinced her that Eros was a monster who had captured her and brainwashed her and that she needed to kill the monster. And she believed them. They were her sisters. Why would they lie? But she believed them and, and she got a knife and she, but before she attacked him, she needed to see for herself. Now, Psyche was <laughs> innately humanly curious and she has, her story has been used as a cautionary tale about getting curious. But here's the thing about her story. We focus on these, she got curious and then this happened. She got curious and then this happened. Because she had to go into the underworld and get a box. And she got curious about what was in the box. So she opened it. Very much like Pandora. Not exactly Pandora. But still, 
the point is is that they you people and society and throughout history we've said well don't get curious because you don't want to end up this way or whatever but psyche ended up becoming immortalized reuniting with eros and living happily and in love her curiosity may have may have led to shakeups on her path but she still got to where she was going because she knew where her heart was leading her the 10th house is about our career our reputation it's about our success in the actual physical world it's what we bring into the world psyche in the 10th house is saying how much are you going to continue to let other people tell you what you have to do to be a success what it is to be a success what it looks like to be a success what it looks like to be seen and heard and and to see yourself in a career maybe some of you are entrepreneurs and you don't feel as though you're in a career you think it's just a job it's just what you do it, it's just it's become just a natural way of life but it is your career it is what you are building now you can either choose to trust in your own mind and your own knowing and your own truth and let your heart fuel that clarity or you can continue veering towards what everybody else says and does and then breaking yourself down because you don't see the success that you truly are you are here to create to discover something when you feel this drain of energy when you feel like you are veering towards those negative addictive thought patterns ask spirit for help ask your angels for help ask your guides for help ask the archangels for help and and know that they're here to help you because they want to help you get yourself aligned and cleared so that you understand your own power. So you understand that the thing that you are being called to do that you have started already or that you have taken the steps towards, that you have now mentally started questioning and becoming cloudy on, that is the calling, your deepest calling. That is what you feel but you can't see. So you can't explain to the outside world. Do not let the outside world sway you on that it is it just feels so important to not let the outside world sway you on that trust your inner world and trust what you've done so let's get one one final healing oracle message for you guys your cards are all over the place of course these are not the easiest to shuffle but there we go oh you guys have so many cards that just like you guys have been getting the most cards it's crazy we have transformation i am constantly evolving i improve inwardly by working on my weaknesses and refining my strengths life ensures i'm presented with situations that will help me learn and grow <laughs> i am aware of my progress and open my wings to the light guys i okay i've had this deck for months but i barely i barely work with it so i don't know any of the cards but this is exactly exactly what i've been saying there were situations presented for you to recognize when you're being drained how it looks how it presents itself so that you don't go through it anymore and you are able to see when your mind plays tricks on you and when your mind caves to the minds of others and the opinions of others and how to overcome that this is amazing affirmation i listen to myself and acknowledge my needs i assert myself and retain my power I am brave and gentle. I don't have to be afraid of others. I respect myself and, and am respected by others. And this again, spirit is just like straight up. It's time to listen here because this is what I said where some of you may be afraid to even engage with, with anything else anymore because this was so difficult. But there, you've learned, you've grown. And you don't need to hold it against spirit or your angels. Your soul... I 100% believe that our souls choose to be in these situations to make sure that we have learned, to make sure that we have grown, and to make sure that we are sure when we start living our truest path. And then we have release. I stop fighting my fears and the hardships of life. I control my thoughts, live in the present moment, 
and accept each stage of life. I work on what I have power over and put into God's hands what I can't, what I can't change. I trust that everything will work out for the best. And this is that pushing away thing with your mind. If you stop pushing it away and you start looking at it and facing it and understanding it and working through it, you can release it. This is amazing. I could not have, <laughs> I, I'm so, wow. You know when the cards just kind of fall and you're like, okay, I'm listening. I get it. Uh, this is me saying, spirit's literally trying to say, get you to say, okay, I'm listening. I get it. I'm amazed. I love, I love when this happens. I'm amazed. This is so great. Pile twos. If you really want to watch <laughs> the other the other pile, if you feel you need to, um, now now I feel like is the time for you to hear that message. I don't know what it is. I haven't filmed it yet, but I feel like you needed to hear this first, so that you don't take anything else with a grain of salt. So you understand your truth. So you understand your worth. And I just saw thirty three thirty three on the clock. All right. Pile number two, um, repeating 35s. Are you guys 35 years old, turning 35 this year? If you are, happy birthday. Um, uh, March and May may be important to you. Hmm. Anyway, sorry, there's a lot of fives. There's some change coming in, guys. I was trying really hard not to do this. <laughs> to break down numbers or anything. I was trying not to, and then they just kind of started popping out at me. But that's because I was picking up a lot of numerology for your pile before before any of this. So anyway, we're going to move on. Pile number two. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for keeping going. Thank you for what you have been through. Thank you for persevering through all that you have been through. It is no small feat. It is not unseen. It is not unacknowledged. And it, I don't downplay it whatsoever. And I am honored, honored to sit here and share these messages with you. I want to say thank you so much to your guides and my guides for facilitating this connection, for bringing these messages forth, and for leading the way. And thank you so much to Spirit. Thank you, Spirit, for my gifts, for my opportunity to sit here and to share your messages with the collective to help others to connect to you and to bring more of you into the world i am ever so grateful every day thank you thank you thank you pile two if this resonated there's the like button share button subscribe notification bell i um, hit all of them that'd be great comment down in the comment section below let me know how it resonated there are links in my description box if you are interested in any of my books. They are available on Amazon. There's a link to the author page. If you would like to take a self-help course to help you get more in touch with yourself and revitalize your creativity and your inner knowing of your journey and your path forward, everything is done by you so that you know that this is not anybody else telling you what, what to do. It's you telling yourself what is right for you. That is down in the description box with a 75% off discount code until June 1st. You just use the, the coupon Eclipse. And if you are interested in a private reading or donating to my channel, those links are also in the description box. Again, Pile 2, you guys are amazing. You have been through hell and high water and I am proud of you. Your guides are proud of you. Your angels are proud of you. The archangels are proud of you. Spirit is proud of you. Your lost loved ones, your ancestors, star seeds, your friends, your family, they are proud of you. I truly, truly hope that you see how proud of yourself you should be. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your energy and thank you for stopping by. I love you all. Bye. Hello, pile three. All right, so I have been explaining this to each and every pile because I know that these are out of order from the ones that you chose from and it was done intentionally. 
So the Seven of Swords card has been floating through the collective. It keeps popping up in my readings every time I ask Spirit what I need to know, what I need to focus on, both in my personal life, but also for my work. It's the Seven of Swords. And the Seven of Swords to me is about our own mentality, our own mind's deceptions. We gather up these beliefs, these thoughts in our arms, and then we leave, we leave what doesn't work behind. But the problem is with the Seven of Swords is the person on the card is looking behind him to the two that is left behind. And the feeling that I got was it's time to see how the mind can deceive the heart in a new way. So as I was trying to read for the first pile, trying to get it set up and connect, it just, it didn't feel right. And I tried to film yours in the second place and it didn't feel right. And I had to surrender and say, okay, spirit, wh what's going on? What are we doing? And this is, this is what I was led to do is helping you understand the different ways in which your mind can lead you astray. It can focus on things from the past. It can fixate and it can deceive you. And when we see the seven of swords, we see deception in the outside world far too often. We think that it's something outside of ourselves that we need to be aware of. And so we go looking and, and the more that we focus on it, on finding whatever it is outside of ourselves, the more we create an external deception situation because we put so much of our energy on this has to be how it is that it sends out that energy sig signature and that's what we end up finding. And then we justify you know, the negative thought processes from the past that we have been trying to move away from. Spirit really strongly wanted to prevent this from happening. Now, I'm going way more in depth with you guys about that part of it because the card that you chose, Prophets and Ancient Seers, and the meaning of it, Decisions and Predictive Guidance, the first thing that I got was this doubt and hesitation. And then directly after that, it was sometimes we need to make decisions for ourselves and allow ourselves to predict our own guidance. And therefore, I am here to give you what you already know within and maybe need just a new way of perceiving it for what happens next, where to go from here. It doesn't, with your pile in specific, I don't even necessarily feel as though you're questioning the next step or the path you're on, but sometimes we can feel that niggle in the back of our head and, and want that, that little bit of confirmation, um, little bit of clarity. And so spirit, at, when, when compiling your your oracle cards was very precise, very exacting. I have very rarely come into this where there isn't an existential web of entanglement going on. Your energy feels very different. And I just saw 444 on my clock. So if you've been seeing repeating fours, this is also serving as a confirmation. So let's get into your oracle cards so we can get the message because I, I genuinely am not feeling a lot of questioning from you guys. Just a little bit of just a small undercurrent of doubt. And it doesn't feel like you're doubting yourself so much as just kind of, it's really hard to explain. It's, it's a feeling, but there's no definitive source that I'm being shown or can sense. So let's just get into your oracle cards and we'll see what the message is. So we have the hyena. 
we have the temple, mother, light attributes, nurturance, patience, unconditional love, joy in giving birth to life, shadow attributes, smothering or abandoning children, instilling guilt in children for becoming independent. Then we have the ever unfolding rose cracked open, cracked open. It's happening for you, not to you. And finally, we have card 20 with soul writing. I just heard um, the writing on the wall. Okay. Um, first of all, we're going to we're going to start with hyena. So we can see hyenas as scavengers, but I always think about the Lion King and I hear Whoopi Goldberg in my head, of course, but the way that they would joke and laugh and, and make light of a lot of the situations, the things that they were afraid of, they would find a way to bring humor into it. With this hyena as well, you can see it actually has... If I'm not mistaken, that would be a first quarter moon, which is an action and initiation oriented energy for the moon. It's that balance of divine feminine and divine masculine where you have been receptive for long enough that now you know the action steps to take moving forward. This past half quarter moon or first quarter moon actually fell over the course of two days, May 8th and May 9th, in both signs of Leo and Virgo. And that moon phase actually worked a lot differently. It felt more introspective. It felt more illuminative. It felt far more of a review in order to move forward. And I think that has a lot to do with the total lunar eclipse that's coming up. But what I'm seeing here is there's this call to understand that <sighs> there's something there's something within you that has opened recently that you're struggling with. It's a heavy energy. It's a sad energy. And it's one that you are kind of blocking from other people. You know, you laugh it off. You're like, oh, it's no big deal. I'm just going through this phase. It's, it's whatever. But what it is is it, it's you learning how to really truly mother yourself. And that, that phase of the healing journey... It isn't a light energy. And I am seeing so much green here that this is this is your heart. This is this is deep deeply embedded in your heart. And it's as though there was a situation that was written in the stars that that your soul contracted. And soul contracts seem to be so prominent right now. I don't know if you've noticed, have you noticed? Let me know in the comments, but it does very much feel like soul contracts are being called into question. They're being brought up. They're being illuminated. With yours, it's something within your heart. And the temple card talks about, you know, both where we come to meet with spirit, but it also talks about, you know, our body as a temple. But what I'm seeing is the core of your being, the core of your energetic field, your solar plexus, is it's being blended right now. And so you can feel off kilter. The more that you love yourself, the more that you allow these things from the past to open up, to understand that life is a joyful experience. It, it doesn't always feel that way, but it is a joyful experience. your heart starts healing and 
it's like you've seen this already. You, you've seen it already. You have known this already. But it's on a different level now. So you've experienced joy. You've experienced love. You, you know how to be patient. You know how to move through these phases. But this one just feels different. And many of you may be working in the actual, like, psychic profession. You may be mediums, tarot readers, um, seers, prophets, prophetesses. Uh, some of you may resonate with the Oracle of Delphi, with Romani, with gypsies. I'm seeing gypsies right now. Um, there's something, I, it doesn't even feel necessarily like y your mother necessarily, but I think maybe the, the way that you view the mother and, and child relationship that feels a little off kilter. Some of you may be pregnant and really freaking out about it. That's an energy I'm picking up. Like, I am, can I be a mom? Like, then you're looking at your childhood and you're also looking at everything that you've done to heal your body, to bring your body in and, and really treat your body like a temple. And what I'm seeing here is <laughs> for those of you who, who are pregnant, your body has become even more of a temple because you are carrying a divine soul within you. And it's okay to it's okay to feel this duality. It's okay to feel this fear at the same time as hope. It's okay to nurture yourself. Your pile is incredibly difficult to read. And it, it's not that I can't tap into the energy. It's kind of the, it's almost as though spirit doesn't want me to say too much. As though looking at the cards is eliciting something within you. There, There's something that almost feels, it's this cracked open feeling I'm seeing an egg over a, over a frying pan. Humor is good in small measure, but it's also important for you to understand that you're not here to, you're not here to laugh off the things that are serious within you. It's okay to, to face them. It's okay to see them, and it's okay to get them out of you. Um, for soul writing, I, you guys know I'm biased. I'm an author. But it's something I suggested to my daughter. She just recently went through a really, really difficult breakup, and she's had a really rough year. And I told her one of the best ways to just sort through the emotions is writing a letter to the person that she wants to talk to or writing all of her emotions down and out and getting it onto the page and moving through it that way so that she can see it all in front of her and work through it. Um, some of you may be automatic writers as well. That may be a gift that is actually starting to open up within you that you may have some fear about. Um, so we have the King of Scrolls in reverse. The King of Scrolls is like the King of Swords. And in reverse, there's so much feminine energy here. It's almost as if the feminine energy within you has just toppled the masculine energy. Then we've got the One of Keys with the Architect. All right. Things are coming a little bit clearer. Um, <clears throat> you are you are most definitely moving through a phase of heart healing. We've got five of scrolls in reverse with diversity of heart healing, and 
what I just heard is the way through is forward. And then we've got the eight of keys with the master artisan. Do you see the alternating colors here? We have air and earth energy, but this is also heart chakra and crown chakra energy. This is helping you to sort through the things that have been plaguing your mind for a really long time and keeping you from taking forward action forward steps because you're too afraid. And, it, and it's not like a crippling fear. It's, it's this fear of, am I, am I capable? Is, do I know enough? And because you feel that way, there's this essence of returning back to your youth and looking at the support and the love and the guidance that you had, whether you had the proper nurturing energy or the proper foundational energy. And you're doubting your, your mind is doubting itself. But, and then we've got the two of keys with the treasure. Okay. So, what I'm picking up is your mind is doubting itself a little bit, and that has to do with something within your childhood, this imbalance of masculine and feminine. And this has been coming up more and more um, collectively, but also in my piles, in my readings. But this is about understanding that within you, your crown chakra is actually feeding and fueling the, the solidification, the foundational... Um, support like support i don't know if that's the right word but support of your your root chakra and <clears throat> this is this is the doubt that i've been feeling so the tri we're hmm, i'm struggling here it is mercury retrograde and i am but this is the doubt i'm feeling you know that you hold this beautiful divine light within you you know you have tre treasures within you you know you have something that is valuable to gift to the world you know that you are valuable and a gift to the world but there's still this essence of doubt and that essence of doubt comes from something with the masculine energy in your childhood that has made you feel as though you will never know enough you will never be able to do enough and build enough because of something i it's going to be different for everybody but spirit is coming in so strong to say can you can you look a little bit deeper here can you see that all you have to do is shift your perspective because as soon as you shift your perspective that light becomes completely and utterly prominent if you have your perspective how it is and how it was then you're standing in front of the light and you can't quite see it you need to turn around you need to shift it you need to flip it upside down because you do have more within you than you think you do and our souls carry memories from times past, from other worlds, from other lives, from other religions, other belief systems, other places that we are able to access. And when we are able to access that, we know that we have the capability of building whatever it is that we want. I also am seeing that you want to build something, create something, bring something into the world that will help people understand the lighter aspect of the heavy things that they go through in life you want to find a new communicative path that helps people understand this ever unfolding rose card you're right on the precipice of moving out of a phase or or you are like shifted out of the phase like you're not even straddling it anymore you were in it now you're on the other side and you're seeing all the ways that we can find Find something to laugh at, find something to lighten the load, but also find our own inner strength. The hyenas, and it keeps bringing me back to the Lion King. The hyenas followed Scar because they felt subjugated. They felt like they were trapped, like they could never get out of where they were. They were in the Shadowlands and they were stuck there. They were never equals, they were never respected, but their actions fueled that belief. 
you're not meant to live your life in the shadows. You're meant to understand the shadows and then come out of that. And a hyena can come out of that if it shows respect for all the other people or all the other animals that exist within the pride lands. Now we're going to take that and make that an equality thing within the world because I feel like this diversity thing is linked to the hyena card and to something that you want to build. You want to help other people understand that we all have a piece of us that is like the hyenas living in the Shadowlands. And we all have a piece of us that live in the Pride Lands. And we can learn how to work together with those two. At the very end of that movie, the hyenas literally turned on the one that was trying to destroy the Pride Lands because he didn't deliver on what he said he would. They want someone to lead them. So if you're in the world and you're seeing these issues and you know within your heart, within your soul, that you have a better path to helping people understand their own personal power, their own true ability to master themselves, master their past, understanding what is their truest worth. And you have this, this gentle mothering energy to you that can soften and and. Kudos to you because anybody who can soften a king of swords is, a, you're a trooper. It, it takes, I was married to someone who embodied the negative aspects of the king of swords for eight years of my life. And there was no tempering that in my life. I, because, granted, I wasn't in my power, but those, those stubborn energies of it, this is how I believe and this is how I'm going to act and this the scathing, cutting ways of communicating. Anybody who can learn how to soften that while still keeping the clarity and the precision of it. The world needs you. The world genuinely needs you. Like you, whatever it is that you create is literally a temple in and of itself. You could paint a picture that helps highlight the equality of all things and humans and animals and souls you could you could paint a picture you could write a short story you could write a limerick or a haiku poem that just is imbued with that essence that spiritual loving heart crown and root melded together essence and present it to the world and it it's like, um, you know, when you, um, I may be dating myself, but way back when, when there were floppy disks, because that's what I was shown, was a floppy disk being put into the computer. And you can hear the computer, like the, <laughs> if you're a computer nerd, I'm so sorry. I want to call it an engine. It's not an engine, but like. <laughs> The hard drive, there you go. Um, you can hear the hard drive start running at a higher speed. The fan kicks on because it's it's working a lot harder. The things that you create and you bring to the world is like putting a floppy drive into a, a tower of a computer. It kickstarts something internally within them. You may not see what happens, which is why there can be this small amount of doubt there. Like, am I really doing what I'm meant to do? Am I really making the difference I believe I'm making? Yes, yes, you are. Because an interaction with your insights in whatever way you present them is the essence of the floppy drive or the floppy disk, whatever, going into the computer. It takes time. There we're talking going from the 90s to now I mean 30 years time in in evolutionary standards of computers so you have to allow f because you have it's like this ancient wisdom and so you have to insert it in an ancient way I don't necessarily know what that means but I have the feeling you do like you know what I mean you're you are one of those souls that just you just know when you when you bring that wisdom in 
it will take a soul that is not as far on their journey as you are time to reboot and then to do updates and then to be reformatted and then to evolve into the next stage and then it has to go through that again but every stage that it goes through that initial floppy disk of information that initial interaction with you that initial insight that you gave was what was needed to evolve them you literally are like a beacon of ever evolutionary power for other souls because you've done it for yourself because you have been through it and you've done it for yourself i have never seen the hyena card in this way before so i definitely can tell you that you are very similar to me in the in in the sense that you know how to view things on a different level are some of you 26 or did you go through a kundalini awakening sometime between the age of 18 and 26 um, 18 feels very prominent so we have the 10 of shells which is the 10 of pentacles blessings and well-being you are you are more successful than you give yourself credit for this one wanted to come out <laughs> 17 with the star peace and healing oh my gosh your cards are literally just flipping like i'm i'm just barely touching them the card number six with love choice and trust yeah and this was the other energy that that i was picking up with with the prophets and ancient seers is that you, the choices that you made there's just that tiny tiny bit of doubt with it and then we have the Eight of Shells, which is the Eight of Pentacles with Quest and Renewal. And the Eight of Pentacles and the Eight of Pentacles. You're literally mastering things in this life, but you're mastering things right now in your life. Um, literally right now, you are, you are becoming the master of your life. I... I can't even focus on the star meaning here. I'm looking here and I'm seeing the swan. And again, it brings me to like the ugly duckling into the beautiful swan. And I'm thinking about it, it, what it feels like is there's this essence of you having returned to certain age ranges, um, like your, your youth and then your teenager years. And now you're maybe, are some of you turning um, 30 this year? 30 can feel like a really big um, birthday turning point. It can be like, oh my gosh, my, my, uh, my youth is over. I don't want to downplay it because <laughs> there, for a really long time, I used to make a joke with my mom that every birthday she had, she was turning 29 right up until I turned 29, and then we couldn't both be 29, so she settled for being 49, and when I turned 30 then she was like well it still feels I can't be 19 years older than you and I was like well I'm offended because I <laughs> I had my daughter at 16 but she's like no I she goes you know I really liked my 50s I can be 55 I can be 59 I don't mind that that's fine just don't make me 60 and I was like okay mom <laughs> whatever you want so it's kind of like we focus on age a lot, but but we're only as old as we allow ourselves to believe. And I, I really believe that because in my 20s, I felt much older than I do in my 30s. Nothing in your life is changing. However, it can feel like a great rite of passage. And, and in that way, it kind of is for you. I feel like you've gone through a lot between the ages of six and 17 and then when you turned 18 it was like you got a new lease on life and all of a sudden you were free you were free to become you because you were technically an adult and that's by america's standards that doesn't apply if you live out of the states i believe it's 17 in, in a lot of places outside of the states and and 16 in a lot of places but that is the energy surrounding that time frame, you know, 16 to 18. And with 17 on the board, it could have been at 17 that this happened. But something prominent happened at 18. And that's why I felt like it was a Kundalini awakening or in 2018. Um, 
2018 could be there too. But you're really, you're already doing everything you're, you need to do. I, I feel like I don't really need to say anything. Um, I think this is a hyena too. It, are hyenas like a power animal for you? Or do you live near the desert? Hmm. All right, we've got the solar eclipse. <laughs> Um, how many of you have been just kind of feeling it since like, and, and when I say it, I mean like everything since the beginning of the month or since April 30th, how many of you have just really been, just been in your feels contemplating your role in the world, contemplating your role in life, trying to figure out where you fit, whether you're doing the right thing, how you can do more, how you can help, whether you're going the right direction, <laughs> are you speaking the right truths, all of those things that the solar eclipse brought up for us. And then we have Vesta, and somehow I'm not surprised to see that with you guys because I was picking up Vesta this morning when I woke up and the fourth house. Okay, so Vesta is the asteroid that is about the hearth and the home. She is a very loving, very warm energy. She wants to make sure the home she builds is firm and the the foundations are strong and the fourth house is the deepest part of our psyches it is the it's the bottom of the sky when we're born and it does say it does signify you know our childhood home and the things that we grew up knowing and believing and in that way it's tied very much to the mother energy however if you for me my fourth house is tied to my father and my fifth and my tenth house is tied to my mother because my father was absent and so it, just the way that things fell, it's very much more father energy for me in the fourth house. And you'll see that with some people. But this is asking you to look at the the actual full roots of where you came from. Or rather, it's saying this is why you're feeling that tiny little niggle of doubt. Because when the solar eclipse happened, there was something with your Vesta in your fourth house, whatever it was that got triggered within you and so you started thinking about your home and and your your heart within yourself the temple of your being but also what you're building in this life and whether it's the right thing to build and how everything happened and where it all went and whether you're on the right path and there is this sense of blessings and and peace coming in to help you understand that this was something that needed to be brought up and brought into the light of day so that you could see the the pieces of your shadow that may have felt like it was laughing at you so there may have been like this i'm hearing um oh what's her name from from the movie carrie the mother who says they're all gonna laugh at you they're all gonna laugh at you um <laughs> oh my gosh my brain is just shut off. I cannot remember the actress's name. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you know. But regardless, there is an, there is something that Spirit wanted me to share with you. Some advice. This soul writing card, you're the only pile where there was an additional oracle deck that was like, you need to use me, you need to use me. And that was the creativity oracle. Spirit wants you to funnel or channel all of this into a creative outlet. Whether you intend on sharing it with the world or not, it's something to get it out of you, to, to help you make sense of it. Um, and what I just heard is new way, new way, new way, new way. As in like, try a new tactic this time. Try a new way. Try a new medium modality module something that that kind of theory like if you are normally a, a writer try painting if you're normally um if you normally shuffle and pull tarot cards use oracle cards something like that it shift the energy change it up a bit so that you can see things from a different perspective so this is the first creativity oracle card you got and here's the image 
and it says generosity. You can afford to be generous with the gift of your time and attention. Card 36. That's really funny. It's really funny that that came out because I pulled that card. It just kind of flew out as I was as I was shuffling too, and I just figured it was a message for me for what I'm doing here. So, nope, it's. Um, I just heard you can afford to be generous with the gift of your time and attention to yourself just as much as you're generous to other people. It's not a all or nothing. It's not just aimed at other people. This is for you as well. And here's the other one we have. You guys and big cats. Kitty, kitty, kitty. I'm a big cat person. I love cats. It says curiosity, be spontaneous, wonder, move forward, look ahead, and stretch above your present circumstances. And I can't help but notice that even though, you know, the 18 was very prominent, we've got 18, 18, which both, which reduced to a 9, and then we've got 36, which reduces to a 9, and a 9. You're closing this cycle out. You're, you're shifting it, you're closing it out because it's time to move forward. You have done all the updates that you need to do in this manner, and now you're ready to share it with other people. It's, you're ready to get curious about different things and, and let yourself try new things. I think that's that curiosity card. Give me just one moment. Sorry about that. I just had cards fly everywhere. That curiosity card is like the message of try a different medium. Try something new. Go a different direction. So let's get... Oh my gosh. You know, this this pile I have had more mishaps and like clumsiness. Are you guys naturally clumsy? It usually is not this bad for me. So, okay. There we go. Oh, you guys got a stack. All right. All of them, Spirit? Yes. Okay. You guys got four. <laughs> it says, inner strength. Nothing moves me from my path to the light because I have complete confidence in myself. I realize my innate qualities and abilities and know that with God, I can do anything. All the power I need is within me. This is a message about that little bit of doubt I keep feeling. Then we have vitality. I am a being of light. I accept the divine energy in my body and every one of my cells regenerates. That's the temple. And look at the, see the heart chakra and the root chakra. <laughs> Creation. I have the power to direct my life. With a constructive attitude, I create what is best for my soul. I firmly believe I can transform and improve my inner and outer worlds by turning every thought into affirmative action. I act in the image of God and bring light into my life. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And the last one is gratitude. I am aware of the light in my life. I direct my thoughts to the beauty in and around me. I give thanks to God for every little thing that brings me joy. Thus, I enlighten my thoughts, riches surround me, and I appreciate all that life brings me. I feel like a lot of this you already know, you already do. This generosity and gratitude seems like your forte, but it's time for you to allow yourself to get curious about what you, what you can create in your life now. It's like you're being revitalized and reminded of your inner strength, and it just needed a little bit of a shift of perspective. And Pile 3, thank you. Thank you for letting me be the one to bring you this very in-depth, very, very profound message. It, it, I am in awe of you. I, I admire you. I respect you deeply. And I am very, very grateful for your energy being here on my channel. So I do definitely want to say thank you and give you my gratitude. But I also want to say thank you to your guides and my guides and for facilitating the connection between us. I want to say thank you to Spirit for allowing me to share my gifts with the collective and with pile three and bring more light and more of you spirit into the world thank you thank you thank you pile three if this resonated please hit the like button share it with your friends share it with your family if you feel so inclined 
and don't forget to subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell up in the corner so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos down in the description box you will find links to my author page on amazon if you want to check out any of my writing to my program breaking boundaries finding freedom which is designed to help you take the reins of your own creativity and your own identity your own path forward in life by really bridging the intuitive and intellectual minds together into one and into harmony there is a 75 percent off discount using the coupon code eclipse until june 1st and there are also links if you would like a, to book a personal reading or if you would like to donate to the channel pile three i am in awe of you guys do not doubt yourselves you are amazing thank you so much for for being you i will see you all next time i love you bye hello pile four so i get the sense of like ah uh, this isn't quite right don't worry don't be alarmed this is exactly right the reason why this is not the card that was presented to choose from for pile four has everything to do with an energy moving through the collective which is the seven of swords energy you know the seven of swords energy talks about deception deceit um, betrayals sometimes but this is more about the way that our mind will deceive ourselves and that's why I opened the reading with asking you to let your heart pull you towards the pile because it pulled you exactly where you need to go. Even if your mind may have told you something else, your heart brought you where you needed to be. So we have the card 10 with Archangel Raziel, which is Wisdom, Inspiration, and Akashic Records. I get the sense you already know what Akashic Records are, but just in case there are some people here who may not know, the Akashic Records are essentially like, in my, for me, they're this gigantic library that holds the books of everything. The history, the real history of the world, but it also carries the stories of our life's journeys, our soul contracts, our place, our past lives, our gifts. There is so much within the depths of the Akashic Records. And Archangel Raziel is the Archangel of hidden wisdom and secrets. It's very um, high priestess energy. And what I am picking up from your pile is there, there is so much wisdom within you, but you don't know how to channel that wisdom or maybe that's not the right way to say it. Spirit, can you help? You are looking, you are looking for new, new ways of bringing it forth. Uh, you may be my trial and error pile. You've, you've tried this and tried that and and attempted this and attempted that and it just hasn't panned out continually. It just isn't working. It isn't flowing the way that you want or presenting in the way that you want and there's this almost sense of inspirational depletion this energy that i am sitting in it's very uncomfortable it is deeply uncomfortable i am the kind of person who loves to be inspired and i will look high and low to find it but I do know what it's like to feel like every time you get that burst of inspiration, if it doesn't pan out, why try again? But there's also this sense of you get this burst of in inspiration and you start formulating a plan and then it seems like it just kind of tapers off. And it's wisdom and intellect are two different things. Wisdom is just this divine knowing. Intellect is what your mind knows. It, 
you can be very, very intelligent. You can know a lot from the world in books and everything, but it does not equate to wisdom all the time. So this is about helping transform those those deceptive thoughts of intellect and shifting them into wisdom so that you can understand that within you is an unending fount of inspiration and it is directly connected to the Akashic Records. This is something that I feel very strongly you came here to be, to engage with and to bring into the world is inspiration in whatever way you do, whatever way comes just naturally to you not forced not not pushed but it just flows out of you i'm hearing poetry in my head all right so let's get into your cards and find out you know where do you go from here how do you how do you shift this how do you transform this and move forward so we have stingray and the firefly and then we have agape we have angel light attribute helping those in need with no expectation of return and shadow attribute acting innocent or angelic to mislead others falsely claiming to be in touch with angelic guidance and we have rebel Light attributes, challenges authority to affect social change, rejects spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs, and shadow attributes, rejects legitimate authority out of anger, rebels out of peer pressure or fashion. All right, sorry about the, the pause there, guys. Um, <laughs> My husband was calling. I was off on my days. So I thought my kids had an early out today. Turns out it's tomorrow. And I've been living in Wednesday today. I don't know. My days have been all off. So we have Leap. You go first. The universe will catch you. And then we have 37 with Focus. And 44 with Expansion. I'm just going to set this down here. Okay. All right, so <laughs> I'm torn between these two, which makes me feel as though you're being pulled to two different things and you don't know which way to go. You don't know, <laughs> there's, there's this sense that you're just, you're, you're actively continually holding yourself back. Now the Stingray card, and I'm not well versed on the stingray card but what gets to me about the stingray card is the chakra alignment of it this is about knowing every aspect of who you are within and being willing to meld all of those together and shine your light because with the agape card and agape talks about unconditional love and universal love it's as though you understand what this is like and so you see all the things that aren't quite working and you're that light that the world needs to understand what it is within them that is being reflected outside of them but until you feel firm and strong and aligned with who you are you are continually feeling like you're it's like you think you're a fraud i it, there's a part of you that's like i know all of these things about myself but and spirit really wants you to stop doing that but <laughs> stop stop qualifying any kind of negativity and the more that you okay okay hang on so every time that you try to stop qualifying this negativity it seems as though it sets you back and and actually puts you back into that same cycle so what spirit is saying is you have this divinely inspired idea you have this brilliant idea and 
even though the firefly is a very, very small insect, its light shines incredibly brightly. It's time for you to break free of those mindsets by taking a leap and just just going with it. Just going with what it is that you have within you that you already know is there, that you've already accessed, you've already started developing these ideas and these these path pathways. I hear paths. This this different thing that you want to do and you need to essentially trick your mind. And the way that you do that is by putting all your focus into just doing it. So you may be somebody who is very, um, my, my favorite word for this is you're very pragmatic and, and, and realistic. So you may have like say a touch of OCD. Um, you may be somebody who makes a lot of lists, um, who needs a lot of structure. You, I'm getting a lot of earth energy here with you guys. A lot of earth energy. And it's time to pull that earth energy up and, and find a way to make that reflective in what you're doing. So if you need a lot of lists in order to feel as though you have some sort of structure, so make your list. Now focus on each aspect of the list. Get it done and then move to the next one. Don't focus on perfecting the one that you just finished, but focus on getting each one done. Now go back and make a list of what you want to evaluate or perfect of each of the steps from before. Now focus on each one at a time and don't give yourself a an opportunity to overanalyze or evaluate or criticize what you have already done. Don't draw parallels between what you're doing now and what happened before but focus yourself on what you want to build and what you want to bring forward because anybody who gets this rebel card along with the firefly card anybody who gets this combination there is a very unique light a very unique perspective a very unique set of of wisdom and inspirational ideas concepts, theories contained within you and you alone that is here to help challenge the things that need to be challenged in the way that they need to be challenged. You have to utilize the aspects that have been playing tricks on you. So I'm, I'm seeing the Seven of Swords again. And instead of looking back at those swords, instead of looking back to at the swords and, and being like, well, maybe I should do this because I did this before or or anything like that. What you want to do is you want to say, okay, I'm not, I'm, I see those. I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm aware of them, but I have what I need contained within me. Now, what you have contained within you is something that holds the propensity to align and revolutionize. And now I'm being told to calm you down. <laughs> um, I used to be a person who who would, I'd go to pick a cards or um, <laughs> I'm going to use my friend Amanda from the Dunn Creative as an example. She did, she loves Vedic astrology, whereas I love tropical astrology. And I gave her my birth information and she pulled up my Vedic chart. And she started telling me all of these things that are within my Vedic chart that I had been hearing for about a year and a half on on a variety of different pick of cards. I'm talking like Ace Otero, um, Chloe Taylor, um, Roseology, Bahati Life, The Dunn Creative, um, White Feather Tarot. I got to think there was um, Baba Jolie, The Gem Goddess. Kino Tarot, all of all of these different readers, the Hermit Tarot, <laughs> all of these different readers, um, who I I very much look up to because they have they have brought me messages that I just refuse to listen to for myself, which is a lesson for you. But we'll get there. They they have helped me shape and change 
a lot about me. But they were telling me these things based off of collective readings. <laughs> and then Amanda was looking through my Vedic chart and she confirmed all of these things. But all the things that she confirmed in there were things that really brought a lot of fear out for me. It, it brought a lot of fear to the surface because it was it was things like, oh, yeah, you've got like this royal blood aspect or or you've got these placements that are, are like royalty. You're very you're very psychic. You're very insightful. You're here to help do this. You're here to help do that. Like you you bring people together. You help with the divine feminine all of these aspects that, that I'd been watching in Pick a Cards that I could easily <laughs> take and say, you know what, it was a collective reading, so maybe I was picking up stuff that was for somebody else. I mean, I am a sensitive, so it's those justifications that you have, those negative justifications to not believe the best about yourself. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because there's this essence of you still don't want to fully believe in who you are and what you're capable of and that that is trying to be shifted out and the more that the more that it's shifted out the more you're you're going to see these moments where somebody reflects back to you a mindset that wasn't that that was negative for you or a mindset that you've been overcoming they're going to reflect it back to you whether that's by me sitting here telling you my story of fear or whether it is from interacting with somebody who reacts the same way that you used to and you start seeing how you used to react and how much you have changed. And when those moments come, when that reflection comes, it's helping you move more into what you're here to do, what you want to do, and really harnessing that inspiration because that inspiration is going to begin expanding within you. As soon as you realize that I'm not sitting here just saying these things for no reason. I'm, I'm, I'm saying them because spirit is moving through me. Before I start any reading, I sit down and I say, spirit, please use me, speak through me, put my ego aside, put, put, Mo put Monica in a box unless you need to use her relations or her understanding, her correlations, put her in a box, put her to, to the side and allow me to be your vessel here to, sp to bring these messages forth, to spread these messages forth. And that's what I do because I don't want, I don't want my ego getting in the way of these things. As healthy as an ego can be, I still don't want it getting in the way. Because I am, because I do that, I am able to bring forth these messages where I will say things that I'm like, I don't even get what I'm saying. I don't have any idea what it is. I really genuinely don't. I don't know what it is that you are inspired to do, but I can feel the inspiration. I can feel that energy within me. And that's the energy that pumps me up when I feel it for myself. And I'm seeing here that the more that you focus on each individual step, the more that you learn how to channel those negative mindsets or, or cyclical thought patterns, the more you learn how to channel those into focal points of, of what you've overcome and what needs to be changed and, and whatever it is, and you stop placing expectations of you have to do it this way or you have to be this way or you have to produce and and appease and please and whatever when you start moving with spirit in in collaboration and doing these things that you have within you that you can feel it's like this bubble up this build up that's that's you can't ignore it anymore those are going to expand and then the work that you do is going to expand and then your perspectives are going to expand and your wisdom is going to expand and from there you become this like <laughs> It's a really weird image. I am seeing like this ginormous firefly like you would see on the sci-fi channel with, with some of their movies. <laughs> You'd be like the, the gigantic firefly like flying through. Um, but you shine your light so bright that nobody can, can look away. And when you shine that light, the way that you feel so, so intensely called to do 
when you do that, you become the reflection of light to other people. And they start being able to see their own shadows. They start being able to see where they've gone wrong, how they've led others wrong, and how to change that. So <laughs> we have the card number two with the Akashic Library. Some of you may need to look into um, Akashic Records, tapping into the Akashic Records and really working with them. Because I have the feeling that you are naturally connected to them. And, and what the work that you do with that flows so easily you don't even realize that you're literally pulling from the hall of knowledge and then we have the one of roses with commitment and this is what i was talking about commit to yourself but commit to your path commit to your inspiration you know what you want to build and bring forward so you think about any kind of um contract it has all these different clauses but the different clauses apply to different areas of life this is kind of like what you're building, but the more that you work with this, the more you're going to start understanding the commitment that you made here in the world. So we've got the King of Forces, and I'm going to pull one more before I talk about the King of Forces with the commitment to the Akashic Library. Spirit. Archangel Raziel really wants you to reach out to him and work with him, and apparently I'm getting... Nope, those aren't your cards. Okay. Let me get one one more for Alpha. There we go. That's your card. <laughs> we have the card number 11 in the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. Um, again, the Ark of the Covenant, it talks about the contract that we make in order to protect something, to bring something into the world. You have this divine wisdom within you. And this divine wisdom has everything to do with the forces of the universe and the forces in the world and the divine masculine energy that we have in the world. There's some, and I have been getting this constant message of healing the divine masculine, healing the divine masculine, and I plan on doing a reading for that at some point here. But that feels very much like this, this king of forces in reverse, and I, I've been getting a lot of reversed kings. Um, it's about your divine masculine needs to be healed so that this commitment does not feel quite so scary because the divine masculine has absolutely no problem with taking action and moving forward and doing what needs to be done. But it's a balanced and a healed divine masculine that is able to do that while still heeding to the wisdom and the, and the intuition of the divine feminine. So within the Akashic Library, if you start, if you feel so inclined, I... I mean, I, I feel it's a really strong pull for you guys to study the Akashic field, to study the Akashic library, to understand your own personal connection with them, not anyone else's, no one else's. There is something different about your energy where you connect to it differently. And there, it's, I just heard, don't, don't muddy it up. Don't, yeah, don't muddy it up. Don't muddy up something that is so pure with other people's take. Remember that you are an expansive being and you're here to help bring expansion into the world. And I just saw you like putting books on the shelf in the Akashic Lab, new books on the shelf. So this to me tells me that you, Raziel is one of your main guides, like, committed to you not going anywhere here to help you all right we've got the hermit card with contemplation and wisdom see again with the wisdom but the hermit is about the inner journey and that's where you're going to connect to the akashic library we've got the eight of crystals which is the eight of pentacles with dedication and progress oh i misquoted and uh, sorry my brain my brain my brain Okay, dedication and progress and a buffalo. Hmm. Are some of you from Australia? Oh, okay. I'm not going to take those, but I did see the Wheel of Fortune with the octopus and the octopus. Has... Actually, the octopus came to me in a dream, but it had the number 16 attached to it. That may be significant for... For someone here i'm not sure why but it was a purple octopus too all right we've got number 15 the shadow self-empowerment and ambition 
And then we have the Eight of Shells, Quest and Renewal. Okay, so this is this is about 100% like what what is next? What's next is an inner journey. Because in that inner journey, when you when you start doing this inner journey, um, you will begin to rebalance that divine masculine within you and understand about how to harness the energy better. I'm I'm ca called to this expansion card again, and I'm not going to lift it up for you guys, but it does have, again, the chakras aligned on it. Some of you may be um, looking into some of the obscure chakras or looking at a way of presenting the chakras to the world in a different way in a different way um but there's something with this shadow that there's kind of um this i don't like i don't like using the word warning but that's the word that just keeps blaring through there is a difference between self-empowerment and coming and trying to empower others and being false and moving from the shadows and saying something to somebody else that you don't truly believe within yourself or within them because you are ambitious. You have this, this duality of very, very genuine light, but your shadow side still has a little bit within it that is, it can skew you into breaking some breaking something the wrong break br breaking something down the in in reverse breaking something down in reverse i don't i'm not entirely certain <laughs> what that means um but it's well i guess the correlation would be it's kind of like this reading it's been it's been a reversal of communication but i always thought that it had everything to do with the fact that mercury is in retrograde and so our communication style is a little bit backwards right now which makes sense to me in my brain it makes sense it might not make sense to you but oh, okay that makes sense <laughs> sorry you need to make sense of, of the things that you understand but you don't know how to help other people understand so the as i was beginning my journey with astrology i was able to grasp concepts quite quickly using my intellect and i would take that intellect and i would just info dump on my husband i would just blah everywhere <laughs> and as I did that, he'd gloss over. And then we went through a phase where we were at odds a lot with each other because I felt like he wasn't listening to me. And it took a lot for him to admit like, hey, you're talking about concepts and theories and ideas and things that I do not understand. And if it were not for him being that forward and that open with me and saying that I just don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. You understand things in a completely on a different level you you have this higher awareness and i don't have that if i if he hadn't said that then i would not have gone on the journey the quest for me to learn how to correlate understandings that i have that i know come from a higher source and be able to translate it into a way that makes sense for other people into a way of using these energies that I understand out in the heavens to really make forward progress, to really change, to really become empowered, to really grasp these these lessons so that we stop going through the same cycles. Now that's for me. What this is saying is you have everything within you. You just have to be aware that you are not moving in a direction that is meant to benefit only you but is genuinely coming from a place that is here to renew and and empower the world 
And there's no shame and no guilt here at all because everyone goes through a spiritual ego phase. Everyone does. And if somebody tells you they didn't, I am telling you right now, my belief, they lie. Everyone goes through a spiritual ego phase because our egos want to be special. Now, we're all special. And at the same time, no one is more special than the other person. We're all special. We're all loved. We're all gifted. We're all blessed. But some of us have different perspectives. And the ones of us who have a different perspective are here to help shape the perspectives of others, help shift the perspective of of others. Because what that does is it opens the door to a greater awareness, more expansive understanding of the universe, of ourselves, of the world, of spirituality, of religion, of mathematics I don't that's that was a weird one to come through but that's what came through but you have this ability to be a walking hanged hanged man energy and the hanged man is hanging upside down very happily and to me that energy is always about shifting the perspective you have to do a pause to shift the perspective Now, with you guys, this is more hermit energy. This is more internal. This is more of a journey within. And with the Eight of Shells, you've got Quest and Renewal. This is literally an internal journey to refill your cups so that you know that you're moving from a self-empowered place. So you know what the shadow looks like, what the light looks like, and how to differentiate the two. So you know that the more that you are dedicated and committed to what you're doing, the more progress you're going to make, the more focus you put on what you're building and what feels right, where your inspiration is and what inspires you, the more you're going to see forward progress. So you don't have to move from a forced, ambitious state. You can move from a steady, dedicated, progressive state And the trick to that is by going into the Akashic Library and working with the Akashic field. I don't know what beyond that because it is going to be different for everyone. It really truly is. And I know how frustrating that statement is because you want it to be easier. But if it was easier, then it wouldn't be your way. And if you want it to be easy, then embrace the fact that it is your way. So if you want it to be easy, then your way is easy. Then you know that you can move forward in an easier manner because it's your way. There's a lot of like discord between mutable and fixed energy. Do you guys have a lot of mutable and fixed energy in your charts? Like almost an equal level of mutable and fixed so that you have this kind of fight between let me flow and change and and meld and and go with what this feels right and this feels right and then you have another one that's like no this is the way it's always been done this is the way we have to do it you may want to check your natal charts all right we have chiron and aquarius (laughs) okay chiron and aquarius so chiron right now is in aries and so if you have your chiron and aquarius which i wouldn't I can't even tell you when Chiron was in Aquarius. I would have to think back. We were we're in Aries now, Pisces before that, Aquarius. It would have been late 90s, early 2000s, I think. Something in that area. I could be wrong. It's 2022. Anyway, this is more about the energies of Chiron and Aquarius. Some of you may actually have Chiron and Aquarius placements, but Aquarius is the cupbearer. Most people think of Aquarius energy as um the energy of the collective you're here for the collective you're here to give to the collective and yes that's true because it is the cupbearer and the cupbearer had underwent all of these traumas it was kidnapped was used was abused and then when the cupbearer was set free by the gods took the cup with the waters of life and poured it out onto the world didn't take it for himself he poured it out into the to the world and gave us the waters of life that's why we think of Aquarius as being here for others however Chiron is here to help heal what came before the pouring of the cup but also to heal the understanding that you have to fill your cup up first now Aquarius is also ruled by Saturn and Uranus which is that 
mutable versus fixed energy and Aquarius is a fixed sign. So you have Saturn who wants you to be disciplined. He is the one that has this eight of crystals and this focus card. Saturn is saying you have to be disciplined, you have to be dedicated, you have to focus, and you have to keep moving forward. You have to trust yourself and keep going. There are lessons that are presented to you so that you can learn, and when you move through those lessons, you keep going, the progress continues. He may feel strict, but he is strict in a very loving, fatherly way. He wants you to learn. He wants you to grow. He wants you to continue moving forward and to learn the lessons that your parents didn't learn or your siblings didn't learn or so, whatever it is. Even if it's learning the lessons that society didn't learn so that you can bring the the truth of the lessons, the empowerment and the enlightenment from those lessons forward so that society has a chance to learn, that's what you're here to do. Now, Chiron is both the wounded healer, but he is also the teacher. This energy is confirming that you are here to bring something into the world into the collective that will be healing for everyone uranus energy being mixed in here shakes things up because uranus was the father of the sky and the heavens he created all of the cosmos he is the father of the father he's like one step below spirit so he creates and creates and creates and creates but he wants you to think out of the box. Down to, down to his um, rotational pattern, his poles are on the side and he rotates like this versus us rotating like this with our poles on the top and the bottom. Everything about Uranus goes against the grain. Use him as your example. He goes against the grain. It is safe for you to go against the grain. You may heal in a completely different way, but the way that you heal could heal others will heal others and it will continue to expand expand you and expand others all you have to do is be willing to take the leap and know that no one is going to stand against you because you have the might of spirit on your side you are protected and led by archangels and you really are connected to them so you don't have to keep beating yourself up thinking well, it's all in my head no it's not do not diminish yourself your shadow side will diminish yourself to the point that you feel like you have to do something different than what you're doing, what you're called to do. And when it does that, then you end up in this turmoil. Right here, right now, spirit is coming through and saying, you have everything you need right now. You have everything you need. And there is healing for you now. So give yourself the time to tap into that inner wisdom to tap into the akashic records to tap into your knowing and your inspiration and let your life be this beautiful inspirational example and paint the world with you however you choose to do it paint the world with you pile number fours this was an amazing rating this was absolutely amazing um before I do this closing, the chakras that you need to focus on here, because I feel like you are very grounded, um, there's a call for the top three, the throat, the third eye, and the crown here. There's going to be some healing. There's going to be an expansion. There's going to be an overhaul. And when this happens, don't be alarmed. It is here for you to help you. Take the leap. It's your turn. It is your time. It is your turn. All right. <laughs> Pile number fours. You guys are absolutely, absolutely awe-inspiring and incredible. I am deeply, intensely honored to read your energy and to share these messages with you. And I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you to your guides and my guides for facilitating the connection between us. Thank you to Spirit for my amazing gifts that I get to share with the world, that I get to share with the collective, that I get to speak for you through or have you speak through me. <laughs> it always brings me such uplifting joy. And just thank you. Thank you again, Pile4. You guys are 
rock stars. You are amazing. You are awesome. You are expansive. You are just, you're ready. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. If this video resonated, please go ahead and hit the like button, share it out. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Let me know down in the comment section below what you thought of it or any insights that you have, any words of wisdom or words of inspiration. In the description box, you will also find links to my author page, which has all my books available on Amazon and Kindle, as well as Kindle Unlimited. You'll also find links to my program, Breaking Boundaries, Finding Freedom, with a 75% off Eclipse coupon code that runs until June 1st. And there are also links if you would like a personal reading or would like to donate down in the description box. That would be all of the last little bit. Pile four. <laughs> Your energy makes me so excited. Thank you again so much. I hope you guys have a beautiful, beautiful day and I will see you again next time. Mwah. Bye.